welcome students we are back with another lesson in this lesson we'll de derive the expression for the intensity at any point in the interference pattern so in this topic we will derive the expression for the intensity using your young's double slit experiment consider the light waves coming from your source S1 and your light waves coming from your source S2. This S1 and S2 are your coherent source. I will explain about this coherent source after we have found out the expression for the intensity. And then after that in our next class, I will explain, I will solve a numerical on intensity and amplitude. And after that next class, we will derive the condition for the constructive as well as destructive interference. Then we will explain your coherent and incoherent sources of light. For now, you consider this source S1 and S2 are your coherent sources of light. Now, the light is coming from your S1 and the light is coming from your S2. So these are your light sources coming from your slit S1 and this is the light source coming from your slit S2. The light waves coming are in the form of a sinusoidal wave where Y1 and Y2 shows your displacement along the Y axis. A1 and A2 shows your amplitude. Omega represents your angular frequency t represents your time and phi represents your phase difference in your second wave okay so to, uh, to take a better look you can look at this simulation fine so this is your first wave a represents your amplitude See the increasing and decreasing. This is your amplitude. Fine. Okay, so yeah, we're on the x axis. Okay, on the x axis, I'll, on the x axis, I will represent my time axis. So x axis stands for your time axis. The y axis represents your displacement. How much it has moved along the y-axis means the displacement of the wave. So look at your first wave. Here the term A1 represents the amplitude. Fine. Can you see the, this thing? The increase and the decrease. This is your amplitude. Fine. Similarly, consider your second wave. This is your second wave. Here also A2 represents your amplitude. Fine. A1 and A2 are the amplitudes of the first wave and your second wave. Fine, let me just fix this. This one, two, one. Similarly, this one, two, one. Okay, now let's go back. Here, this F. F represents your angular frequency omega. Fine. This is your angular frequency. How fast it completes it, it completes one cycle. Can you see? Look here. Here it takes a long time to complete one cycle. But if I increase my frequency, what happens? It takes less time to complete my one cycle. Can you see? It starts with zero. And after how much time it reaches to zero? After 1.611 second. So this is your frequency. How fast or how slow it completes its cycle. Okay. Or how fast or how slow it's complete its period. This is known as your frequency. And the same thing is applied. The second wave also has the same frequency omega. Okay. The same. Okay. Yeah. There's no notation for this omega okay that's why i'm using the term f so f represents your omega fine so if i increase this one that means it takes lesser time to complete the cycle if i decrease 
then it takes more time to complete the cycle fine so this is your angular frequency let me fix it to one fine now apart from this one the extra term here is your p this p is your phase difference okay to phase uh, to check the phase difference look at this part so can you see your first wave and the second wave if the phase difference is zero then the second wave your blue wave lies exactly on top of the first wave fine but if i change this phase okay now can you see the values has changed here for the red wave i'll get one at how much time the value i'll get one displacement at time equals to pi by two but for your second wave look here i'll get one when the time equals to 0 0.571 seconds and why is it so because of this phase because of this phase difference can you see so in this case this case when the crest and trough falls on each other this is the crest of the first wave this is the trough of the second wave when they fall on each other then we'll say that it is out of phase your two waves are out of phase but if they fall on top of each other like crest falls on crest trough falls on trough then in that case wait huh? 6 point then in that case you have a the the first wave and the second wave are in phase with respect to each other fine so i will give you the link for this web page okay you can come here you can change the values and you can see how does your wave changes okay you can play around with the amplitude you can play around with the phase difference you can play around with the frequency and see how this total effect changes okay now as we know okay what happens when the two waves superposes each other when the two waves superposes each other then we get a resultant wave can you see this green wave this green wave is your resultant wave fine right? so if the two waves are in phase with each other and they superposes then the resultant will be high the intent this amplitude can you see this is maximum how much two but if the phase if they are opposite phase okay if they are not in phase with each other like in this case look at the green wave what happens to the green wave check okay so at this point when your red wave and your blue wave are out of phase with respect to each other what happens to the green wave the green waves is cancelled there is no resultant wave fine so you can check through this animation how does it plays if they are in phase the amplitude increases if they are becomes out of phase the amplitude decreases and so on the cycle repeats can you see fine so i'll share you the link for this web page you can come here and you can play around with this simulation fine to take a better understanding i'm coming back so you have two waves y1 equals to a1 sin omega t y2 equals to a2 sin omega t plus phi fine now consider at any point on the screen okay at any point on the screen according to the superposition principle what will be the net displacement the net displacement will be the sum of y1 plus the sum of y2 fine so y equals to y1 plus y2 now let us substitute the values of y1 and y2 here fine now we will expand this term 
using the relation sine of a plus b. So sine of a plus b equals to sine of a times sine cos of b plus cos of a times sine of b. Similarly, we will use this formula here. Here, a will be your omega t and b will be your phi. Fine. So on expansion, I can write this term will be remain same a1 sin omega t but this term will become a2 sin omega t cos phi plus a2 cos omega t sin phi now look here at these two terms Wait, let me just use a highlighter okay now look here here you have sin omega t fine similarly you have sin omega t here so can i take these two terms common yes So if I take this sine omega t term common, then what happens on this side? What I'm left with a1. Yeah, what am I left with? I'm left with a2 cos omega t. A2 cos omega t. This term remains same. Fine. Now look here. Let us suppose if I substitute this value. Okay, a1 plus a2 cos phi as some constant a cos theta fine similarly let us put this term this a2 cos omega t this term also as or instead of putting this a2 cos omega t okay wait on just a minute let us put a2 sine phi okay why because we know a2 is the amplitude of the wave which is constant phi is the phase difference between this two wave which is also a constant fine so let us replace this term by a constant fine so after replacing this constants here i'll get a cos theta sine omega t plus a sine theta cos omega t fine now again I can use this same relation here. Fine. So first let's take this a term common. Fine. So from here what I'm left with I'll be left with I'll write down here. Okay. This part I'll write here. Cos theta plus uh, cos theta times sine omega t. Okay, now in this case, if I take this a term common, then what I'm left with sine theta cos omega t. Fine, now is this part similar to this part? If yes, then I can replace this one with sine of AB. Similarly here, I can replace this one as sine of theta plus omega t. Or I can replace this one as sine of omega t plus theta. Fine. So this is the resultant displacement. Here, A represents your amplitude. And theta represents your constant phase difference. Fine. So I'll continue writing on this part. Okay. After this, you can look here. Fine. So I've written here. This is the expression for the resultant wave. Fine. Now let's first find out the expression for this amplitude. To find your amplitude, you will square your equation 1 and your equation 2. Fine. And then you will add the square of these terms here. Fine. So square your this term first so i have a square cos square theta then on the left hand side i have a1 plus a2 cos phi whole thing square fine now if you square this one this will be a square plus a2 square cos square phi plus twice of a1 a2 cos phi fine similarly you can square your second term so first you will square this part a square sine square theta right this one here
fine then you square this part this will be a2 square sine square phi which you will write down here now look here you have a2 cos square phi and you have a2 sin square phi now let me take this two terms common so if i take a2 square term common from both of this fine so this term will be a1 square i'll take a2 square common so inside bracket i have cos square and from here if i take a2 square common then i have left with sine square fine this term i'll write down here now similarly here i can take this a term a square term common so uh, inside here i have a square inside bracket cos square theta plus sine square theta now using your trigonometric identity sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one therefore this term will become one similarly this term will also become one so what i'm left with here i'll be left with a square and on the left hand side part i'll be left with a1 square here a2 square and from here twice of a1 a2 cos phi now let me send this square to the other side it will become square root fine so this will be the expression for your amplitude fine now as we know your intensity okay the intensity of light is directly proportional to the amplitude square fine in that case i can write the intensity for the wave coming from the slit s1 as k times a1 square where this k is your proportionality constant fine similarly using this relation again i can write i2 equals to k times a2 square where a2 is the amplitude of the second wave and i equals to k a square where a is the amplitude of the resultant wave fine this one this is your resultant wave fine so multiplying this proportionality constant k on both side of this equation four i can write k a square plus k a one square plus k a two square plus twice of root of see I can write root of k a1 or I can also write this one as under root k a1 square under root k a2 square and cos phi now let us substitute these values k a square equals to i k a1 square equals to i1 k a1 square equals to i1 k a2 square equals to i2 k a2 square equals to i2 so i can write the resultant expression for the intensity i equals to i1 plus i2 plus 2 root over i1 plus root over i2 cos phi fine so this is the intensity at any point in the young's double slit experiment fine so in our next class we'll solve a numerical based on this amplitude and intensity after this we will derive the condition for your constructive interference your that means your bright interference and sorry bright fringe and condition for destructive interference that means your dark fringe fine and then we'll discuss your coherent and incoherent sources fine so that's it for today's class thank you and if you have any confusion please don't hesitate to ask i will re-explain it to you again so again Thank you.